So in this video, we're going to do something a little different. Since I am on vacation this week, let's go ahead and do a little rewind, talk about some great projects we've done in the past, some of my favorites, and then also we'll give an update on some future projects we're doing. If you don't feel like sticking around for the whole video, just jump on down to the comments. Definitely give us a like, of course, because you, I'm sure you do like us. If not, but do give us a comment and let us know on something you would like to see in a future video so we can kind of put it together and see if we can do a video on it. So if you made it through all my rambling so far, let's stick around and let's check out some projects. So I do get asked this a lot on what are just some of your favorite products and different things we've done. And we've done a plethora of different projects in the past. And of course, we just can't list all of them. They're pretty much all of my favorites. And I still use a lot of the projects still in my home today and keep the home automation running. Of course, to start with the small stuff to make it all work, I do like the Wago 221 connectors for wiring up all the different switches and especially if you're using, say, a Shelly because they do have all the extra jumpers and different wires in the boxes. I do find the Wago 221 connectors allow you to see things easier and make it all fit in the box. And especially if you've got, say, a three or four gain wide switch and you're trying to put a bunch of smart switches or dimmers, I just find the Wago 221, you can exactly see the wires inside and make sure everything has good connections. So this takes us back to what is our favorite smart plug? Various smart plugs from GoSun to all the different knockoffs. And with Tuya Convert, there's a lot of different options nowadays. But I will still say my favorite for reliability and precision on power monitoring and being able to fit two of them in a regular socket is going to be the Sonoff S31. I've been using two of them on my washer and dryer for just probably over a year, year and a half and never had any problems with them and they work all the time and we use them for the voice notifications when the clothes need to be changed over from the washer and dryer and vice versa. The one thing I do like about them is they do have the solder pins inside if you ever need to recover it for some reason. And also it does use screws and no glue on it. So you can take them apart and put them back together without destroying them. Great little plugs. So it leads us all to the power monitoring. Well, I've done the Shelly EM. I've done the six channel power monitoring board. And I still will say after using both, that power monitoring board that's expandable from 6, 12, 18, et cetera, different channels. Truly awesome power board, and we will be doing an update video on it showing their new little small sensors that you can pick up from circuitsetup.us as well. Small little CTs and fit them anywhere inside the breaker box. So that brings us to sensors. What about sensors? Well, I've never been one much for using battery powered sensors. You always had to replace batteries and deal with them. I just didn't like them. Well, I kind of had to eat my own words as soon as I saw the Y sensors and played with them. They're truly amazing little sensors. I've had several of them around the house from in my mailbox to closet doors for different notifications, turning on lights. The motion sensors are pretty amazing and the battery life has been truly good as well because I really haven't seen them drop down below like 95% battery. And there's some in high traffic areas in our house, such as the kids' bathroom and everybody's in and out of there all the time and allows for automated lighting. So if you haven't checked out the wise sensors, definitely check them out. It's a cool little project and it does not cost much. The only thing I wish, wise needs to send those to other countries and stop just sending them just to the U.S. because... They're awesome. Send them overseas too. Those guys want those. So what do you use for lighting, Travis? Do you use different, a lot of smart bulbs? You've done the smart bulb video that you compared like all kinds of different lights, right? Yeah, we don't use a whole lot of smart bulbs. We use them in a few different spots. And of course, still my favorite is going to be those Lojas bulbs. We do have a little upcoming comparison video we're going to do on those. Because right after we did the video, and if you did watch the live stream, you see we did show that bulb as well as we went through and saw the different pins and how to configure it for the template and Tasmoda. They did change the Lojas bulb that I did pick for the smart bulb comparison video. 
they added the warm white channel to it, which is a good thing because that was one of the complaints people had with that bulb is it did not have a true warm white channel. Well, now it does and even makes the best bulb even better. And for other runner up for lighting, we have a bunch of down lights that I've installed. I've got several above me at this point that helps light up for different live streams. And I recently installed several of them in my living room. And that leads into another project, which we'll get to eventually, as well as do I do have them in my bedroom. Really fell in love with them when I installed them in another home. That's when I did my smart control video of the six down lights with those two Martin Jerry dimmers. There's a Zimmy Smart down lights. They do have a four inch and a six inch version with different wattages. They're pretty cool down lights and pretty simple for me to install since we do have access to the attic in this house and they can just cut a hole. We can throw one in, we run electrical to it. So pretty cool. You can also put those in your recessed can lights on some of them as well. So for cameras, I know we talk about cameras a good bit. I do run everything using Blue Iris. I have it on a little Core i7 refurb box that I picked up off of eBay. It's definitely a good choice. I know Blue Iris doesn't use Linux, but just pick up a little refurb, a little small form factor PC. You can throw a hard drive or two in it and you can throw it up in the closet and let it be and it becomes just your standard bare metal Windows box to run Blue Iris. And then you can pick whatever cameras you want, of course, as long as they support RTSP and all the other various protocols. But it kind of fits you in that Home Assistant way where you can mix and match all the products and bring it into one spot. That's kind of what I feel Blue Iris does for the camera world. And even mentioned to that, you can do MQTT and send different alerts and commands back and forth with Home Assistant to tightly integrate things in with Home Assistant if you like. So we're still using a mix and match setup of the Reolink RLC 420s. They're truly some awesome little cameras. You can get them on sale sometimes. I think I saw them today for around $40 for each camera, which that's insane. You can get for, to get a power over ethernet camera that's five megapixel and has an SD card slot for 40 bucks. That's nuts. We were paying way more than that a couple years ago. Now the one thing they do have a smaller field of view on them than I like in some areas. So for those, I've stuck with that Amcrest 4K turret. That's truly one of my favorite cameras. It has a very wide angle, pretty decent microphone on it. Once you change a couple of the settings and allows you to tweak everything, like if you want to turn the infrared down halfway and not just turn it off, if you're blowing out things for some reason, there's something reflecting. The Mcrest cameras are truly awesome for being able to tweak things. They are a little more than the real link ones, but you do get what you pay for in that aspect of being able to do a lot of different settings. So that leads us to switches. What do you use as switches, dimmers, etc.? Well, there's no hiding the fact that I really love those Martin Jerry dimmers and Martin Jerry switches. No, they're not any sponsor or anything of me. I just like those switches and dimmers. The dimmers they have are really truly one of the most versatile dimmers out there. There's no secondary MCU to contend with, which means you can program all three buttons to do exactly what you want to do, which we will be doing a project you'll see soon that when I finished my iFan 03, we're going to use two Martin Jerry dimmers to control the six down lights as well as control the iFan 03 that's going to be installed in the fan. So we'll be able to turn the fan speed up and down as well as turn all the down lights up and down with the two dimmers. Because of those versatile dimmer switches, you can control anything you want with them and really just kind of they work out as a good Wi-Fi button. For switches, of course, single pole switches, that's the Martin Jerry ones, we do like those. You can control the red and blue LEDs to make them match with our dimmers. They look great, as well as their three-way switch is pretty awesome because you don't need any additional rules in it. You can use it with Tasmodo, ESP Home, and just do the template almost kind of like a Sonoff Basic where you just have the LEDs, the relay, and the button, and that's it. It handles all the three-way switches and even works in a four-way wiring configuration as well. Now, I know some people have had some issues with them, but it's mainly due to wiring. So if you have had issues with them, it does get confusing at times, even with dumb switches doing three-way and four-way, etc. So definitely check your wiring on those. They are great switches. 
Now, one thing I will say, do not buy their Martin Jerry three-way dimmers. They are not ESP based and you won't be able to flash Tasmodo or ESP Home on them. They'll be stuck in the cloud and you'll regret it. Don't buy those Martin Jerry three-way dimmers. And Martin Jerry, if you're watching this, if you want to change that design and bring it back to ESP, we'll definitely take a look at them again and hopefully we could make them a recommended product. Now, of course, to bring it all together, what makes all of this stuff work? Well, even before I knew what Home Assistant was, I installed the Ubiquity access points. I got tired of contending with just various products from Netgear and D-Link and Linksys and everything and just having mediocre Wi-Fi. And just, it was always number one issue of whether we didn't have Wi-Fi in the backyard or at this part of the house, it was dropping. I just got tired of fighting with it and we installed two of the Ubiquity LR access points. We did a little video on it previously at the beginning of the channel where we did use the Home Assistant presence detection with it, which it does still work well and we use that. But the number one thing, it allows all of our Wi-Fi devices to work. And I can tell you right now, I've got over 90 devices between those two access points. And looking at the air utilization reports in the Unify controller, they're screaming for more and we'll be definitely be adding more ESP based products as we move forward to the access points. If we do run out of air spectrum for some reason, I'll just add a third access point. It's a very versatile system. And I know a lot of people have asked, hey, do you use the USG or do the Unify switches? Well, I did find some of their Unify switches were a little overpriced for what you get. And I had some issues hearing about different fans and heating issues. So really a switch is a switch for the most cases for the home user. And I just went with some typical PoE switches by Netgear that were a little bit cheaper and gave me some more ports. And I'm still able to use VLANs on them and everything else since they are managed switches. But of course I don't get that nice feature of being able just to click everything in the Unify controller. But again, it doesn't have all my eggs in one basket with all the Unify controller stuff in one spot, which is kind of one of the reasons I didn't go with the USG and I went with the Edge router. It's a really great router and I wanted a little more power features on it and being able to tinker with things. And of course, like I installed WireGuard on it. It was stupid simple to install WireGuard and I use that every day and it works great as a VPN straight back to the house. Now, of course, now I will be moving to soon when I can get the that whole time thing. I'll be moving to a little network box. It's a little Core i3 and we're going to be putting OpenSense on it. And I'm really excited to get that up and going to have truly a lot of power and reporting because I'm just a data nerd. I really like looking at all the data and being able to really fine tune things of what each device can do and go and do on the network. So we'll be putting OpenSense on that and maybe I'll get that done over the holidays and I'll kick the edge router to the curb and just stick with the U Ubiquity access points. But that's the great thing about that. It's really flexible. If you made it this far, there's one thing I really love and it ties it all together is my Unraid box. It's where everything lives. It's, I've got about 40 to 50 terabytes of storage in it. I store all my YouTube videos and clips and various footage and outtakes and stuff I don't use and all my various ramblings that I cut out. Like I should probably have cut out a bunch of this video, which we did a couple months ago. We did rebuild off of our Xeon box and we went to an AMD Ryzen setup. And man, I really love this setup. It's an awesome setup. It allows all my media to be in one spot with all the hard drives. And we put it in a Fractal Design R6 case. Wow, that's truly an amazing case. I fit all of my hard drives. I still have room for more. And I got rid of the issue of constant heat issues plagued with my hard drives because there's just a, like a wall of fans in front of it. And it's not sitting far from me when recording this video. And guess what? You do not hear it. I actually hear my laptop from the recording of this video over that server. Great stuff. So in future projects, we're just going to go ahead and I think we have three or four or five holiday video LEDs. Uh, that's off of the request from Sour Pickle. He just wanted us to do nothing but Christmas lights. And I think Stone wanted us to do that as well. No, just kidding. 
I don't even know if I'm going to get a chance to do any of the holiday lights or Christmas lights or whatever you may want to do or all year lights, etc. We're just probably going to stick to doing some various projects that we're going to use year round in the house. So of course, as we mentioned, we're going to do the Sonoff iFan 03 project. So stay tuned for that. Possibly, if you want, we'll do another bulb comparison and maybe we'll put Philips Hue in at this time. I know I had a lot of people asking, hey, you missed Philips Hue, but they're expensive. Who wants to do that? But maybe we'll pick up a couple, use them as reference bulbs. So if there's any other projects, definitely leave a comment down below. Let us know what you want. Let us know what you don't want. I mean, that's how I am. Tell it like it is. So go ahead and I do the same. Tell me like it is. So I appreciate you watching. Thank you to all of the Patreon subscribers. It makes bringing all these videos a reality based on we can bring different projects and products to the channel. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, smash it, do whatever you want to do. Hit the hammer. It's your computer, your screen, whatever it is. And hit that bell icon. And y'all have a good holiday and y'all take care.